Hey guys, you guys want to learn how to make your network your net worth? Tune into this episode. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. It is solo round time, baby. And is that right, Chris? What's up, guys? So we got Chris right here facing me. He's trying to keep a straight face, but um, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face looking at this guy. It's very, very <laughs> difficult, but this is why we enjoy these uh, solo round podcasts because Chris and I can't help ourselves to have a lot of fun with these. And um, most importantly, though, we do make them very educational and applicable to you guys and the listeners. So uh, here we are for another episode. And today we're going to be talking about five ways to make your network your net worth. So this is going to be a great podcast episode just because I'm all about networking. And I think you are, too. Is that right, Chris? I absolutely am. Um, so we can kind of just talk about why we're really doing this you know um i think we should have probably done this a long time ago to be honest um but the the thing about networking is just absolutely huge right it's getting even bigger going forward with everything um it's really getting into the era where it's like if you're not making those deposits if you're not sitting there being a giver instead of a taker if you're not doing something to add value for somebody else then you're not going to build a relationship with these people. You're just not, you know, it's really that, or you have to play that game to where it's like, you know, pay to play because you're you're going to be paying to pay, uh, to, 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 for these people's time, for their attention. Right. And there's, there's, there's a time and place for that, where you're sitting there paying for somebody for their attention, for their time. But if you could sit there and be a giver, not a taker, if you could sit there and add a value, uh, make those deposits by helping them out instead of like thinking that it's only about yourself. then I think you could, I think the relationship's going to be built, um, a lot better and it's going to actually sustain it for a long time as opposed to just like being like, okay, here, I'll give you $5,000 for your time or $10,000 for your time. Because I think when you do that, just at some sense, some people aren't going to really respect the relationship as much as, as, as opposed to you really building the relationship and making those deposits and nurturing it. Whoo, man, you're already on fire. We, no, I didn't, come I didn't out even the gates ask on you a question. One. Come out of the gates on It's funny because I was going to ask you too. I was going to ask you the question like, why is networking so important to you? That's the way I wanted to kick off this episode, but yeah. I didn't have to ask. So now you guys know why networking is so important to Chris. I mean, he just pretty much just went on a small little mini rant, but I'm sure we'll probably get into more rants um, going forward. But I want to ask you really quick before we get into these five networking tips. Um, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Um, we're going back home to moms. I'm excited about that. There, there's nothing like mom's home cooking, like they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you most excited about eating on Thanksgiving Day? Mm, definitely uh, the the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the biscuits with gravy poured all on it, <laughs> and then uh, apple pie. That that's what I'm looking forward to. Oof. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, what are you looking forward to mostly about just like, you know, getting away from LA? Getting away from LA? Well, I want to first answer, I'm looking forward to stuffing. I'm a huge mm-hmm. stuffing fan and pumpkin pie fan, so that's what I'm looking forward to. But uh, yeah, I actually did a, it's funny, I did a uh, Instagram live video on this earlier today about creating space, the importance of creating space. Mm-hmm. And that's really what, you know, I'm looking forward to is creating space, mm-hmm. uh, going back home to, you know, Northern California, just seeing old friends. Um, you know, seeing our family, spending that time, that quality time, and just getting away from just like the daily grind, the daily hamster wheel out here. Um, I'm not complaining by any means. We're, I, think, I feel like we're blessed. There's so much opportunities out here. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Living in LA, I love it. But um, it does take a toll on you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So um, I, I definitely know when my breaking points are, and I need to, you know, get away from time to time. So I'm looking forward to just creating space and just get my creative juices flowing, baby. That's it. Man, yeah, dang. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so let, let, let's get into this, Chris, because I, I want to respect the listener's time. But uh, okay, like we said, we're going to talk about our five ways to, um, pretty much to make your network your network because that's what Chris and I really feel that um, is very important these days. So, tip number one is when you're approaching networking, um, always have that giver mentality, right? Not the taker mentality. Always think, always have that, that, that cap on thinking, what is it I could do to really serve this person? What can, what is it I can do to help this person out instead of them helping me out, right? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you agree to that? Yeah, and then what's a story like the, I remember there was a time, or what, what, when we used to go like to the bigger conferences, what did we used to do? Like one Yeah, okay, no, no, that's yeah. a great point because I do want to tell some stories um, along this uh, episode. And one story I want to talk to you guys about was we went to Thrive 2. It was in San Diego. It was like two or three years ago, right? Yeah. So, 
Um, that was like one of the big major entrepreneurial con conferences we went to, and I'm really glad we went to it because it changed our life and um, our business. But um, pretty much what Chris and I did was we looked on the, the homepage, you know, and we researched all the, the speakers there. I remember that, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, huh, who, do, who are some of these people that look familiar? We've read some of their books. We've listened to, to, we listened to some of their podcasts. We're like, we want to get familiar with these people. We want to kind of, you know, um, you know, what is it we can do to help them out? Vice versa, you know, ask for something because they probably get asked all the time. So mm -hmm. what we did was we went on the, the website, we researched all the uh, speakers, you know, what time they're going to be speaking, um, what the topic was going to be about. And literally what I did during that conference um, was when the speakers that I wanted to really meet and network with is I, when they were on stage speaking, I had my phone out, I did a one minute clip of them up there speaking on stage, which is very, very powerful social proof if you really ask me. Um, and then I pretty much took a couple pictures of them and then I tweeted it on like, uh, what's called uh, Twitter and then I even tagged them on Instagram just to show them, hey, you know, I'm here, like I'm trying to help you out, here's some cool pictures. And then what I did was I uploaded that one minute video to a Dropbox folder. And then I sent it to either you know their Instagram or I sent it to their assistant after that we got when we got back home and after the conference. So again, it was one of those things where I had my giver mentality on, right? Where I was like, what can I do to help these people? Because chances are they're they're probably getting pitched all the time and it's like I'm not gonna come at them like that and say, Hey, you know, what can you do for me or can you help me? This and that. So mm -hmm. that was just like pretty much like a random act of kindness in my opinion to where I just sat there and you know gave them a one minute video, some pictures of them on stage, and hopefully they appreciate that. And if not, no big deal. But um, I thought that that was a great way to you know, just set yourself apart from all these other people and just you know, go the extra mile. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and there's so many ways that we can talk about you know, being in that state of you know, being a giver instead of a taker, mm -hmm. right? But I think that's a really good concrete example for the listeners because anybody can do that right now. Anybody, yeah. nobody has the excuse to sit there and not be able to pop up their phone these days whether it's a small workshop, a conference, whatever it is that you're attending, and you want to build a relationship with the speaker or somebody like that, do what Eric said. Just make a one minute video for them, put it on Dropbox, and then you know, um, tag them in it on social media or after when you take a picture, ask for their phone number, their email, and be like, hey, I got you guys a one minute video. Would you guys like it? You know, take a picture with them. So boom, the, the relationship's established right there, and I'm sure they're gonna remember that in some sense, unless they're assholes, okay? Yeah, if so, they don't, no big deal. Exactly, you just move on, you know? <laughs> move on. Okay. So the second um, way to make your network your net worth is uh, bring books, business cards, you know, wherever wherever you're at to hand out, right? And I, I think this is a good thing to do. You know, a lot of people say, well, oh, you know, business cards, they're old and, you know, it, it's kind of like dinosaur age stuff. I don't think it is, you know, because, you know, everybody likes a good business card and be able to pass something out. People say that, oh, you can take just their phone numbers now, which I agree 100% to, you know? There's no right or wrong answer with this, but, uh, if you guys don't have a book, which a lot of other people say that a book is a new business card these days, <laughs> right? Which is fine. You know, I'm not going to get into that. But whether it's a book, whether it's a, a business card, a flyer, whatever it is, it kind of tells about who you are, what you do, what you offer. Um, I think it's good to have some sort of material um, with you, you know. And something that Eric and I do a lot is when we go work at coffee shops, we'll take like a book inside like our, our briefcase or our backpack because. You never know who you're going to sit there and run into. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Briefcase. Briefcase? Briefcase backpack. <laughs> uh, try to look forward to briefcase okay. like I'm walking in the financial district or something like that. You know? but, <laughs> Business man. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, you know, just put a book in like your bag or, or your um, briefcase or something like that and just take it with you places. And ladies, you guys can put a book in your guys' purse as well too. You can put these uh, cards or, or postcards, whatever it is. Um, you know, and another thing that what we do too is we actually take a book with us. Um, in our gym bags, yeah. right? We put it in a Ziploc bag mm -hmm. with a Sharpie, yeah. right? And we take two books with us every single time. We always make sure we're locked and loaded with these books before we head into the gym because you never know who you're going to run into when you're training at the Mecca, right? And how many times have we sat there and like saw somebody working out and we literally dig into our backpack, we start signing the book right there on the spot and then we go up to them, introduce ourselves, take a picture of them, hand them the book. Yeah, and you're right. I kid you not, like we've been going there for like two years now and we've probably handed out probably a total of like a hundred books. Yeah. And that's just like out of spite, just running into people there. But I mean, I think it's all intentional too though. I mean, we, sit, we go to that gym for that reason because yeah. it is a networking hub there. And you know, that's that could be another little like, you know, ninja tip or, or nugget where, you know, if you have a big gym, a big box gym around you where you know, you know, influencers go to or just, you know, celebrities, then 
hey, make it make it a point and go to that damn gym. Exactly, and that, that's a way we've kind of like broken the ice with them and mm-hmm. you know had that giver uh, mentality and introduce ourselves. And we've gotten a lot of them like on the podcast yeah. and stuff like that, right? And I'll tell you a really quick story, which is funny is. Last week, um, you know, we kept hearing the myth that Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> <laughs> works out like at six in the morning, and we're like, ah, shit, there's no way we're gonna wake up at six in the morning, you know. But hey, if we ever run like five in the morning, yeah, somebody said five or six, but yeah. that, that's not we're not even awake at that time. <laughs> well, we're starting to wake up at six now, but uh, we saw him uh, a week ago at the gym, and <laughs> we were doing a lap. I was doing a lap pull down, and he's right behind me doing a, a chest press machine. And me and Eric both kind of saw him, but it was kind of like, you know, we don't really get starstruck, but with Arnold, we were just like, whoa, like, dang, Arnold is right there doing a chest press right behind us. Oh, like the Terminator's right behind (laughs) us. Yeah. So um, I know Eric's mentality was like, you know what, I'm not going to sit there and bug him and this and that, but my mentality, I'm just like, you know, sometimes I don't give a shit. I'm just going to sit there and take action and... You know, if I mess it up, I mess it up. If not, I'll live with it though. So yeah, that's good that we're different than that. Yeah, exactly. So I had a book there, literally signed my book to him saying, Arnold, thank you so much for your influence, your inspiration. You helped me write this book. And I handed it to him and introduced myself to him. And he shook my hand and he gave my, his or our book to his personal trainer to um, you know take with him. Hopefully he didn't throw it in the garbage, but you know, <laughs> he, took, uh, he took our book. So after that, I didn't ask him questions. I didn't ask for a picture. I left it at that. And that's how uh, how we build a relationship. And um, maybe if we see Arnold again, we'll ask the Terminator to get on the podcast. Who knows, guys? But that's really what tip number two is. Just bring something that kind of tells about who you are, what you do, whether it's a business card, a book, a fly, or something like that. Because you never, ever know who you're going to run into these days. You never know. Yeah, no, it's really powerful. Okay, so uh, number three for um, how to make your network your network net worth is... Go to conferences, go to seminars, go to coffee shops, go to local meetup groups, um, whatever you can get your hands on and just do your research with that because these things are everywhere. There's really no excuse. Um, So the reason why I think that's so powerful is just because, I mean, that's how you really meet people, right? That's how you genuinely have that human face-to-face communication, shake someone's hand, look at them in the eye and get to know them, you know? Um, So... I, that's why I think those are really important, that you have to make it a point to go to them. I mean, it, I'm not saying go to these big conferences like once a month because that does get very costly. Maybe once a quarter, once you know, quarter. you go to a big conference and you travel, have some fun with that. Um, but local meetup groups, um, seminars um, around like your, you know, radius or environment, that could be done once a week or even bi-weekly. There's no excuse for that. So yeah. um, and then coffee shops, coffee shops are like the new work offices, right? Yeah. So, um, Go to coffee shops, Starbucks, coffee beans, Pete's coffee. I mean, it's endless, right? So just go there, put yourself out there and just, you know, give off that good energy, smile at people, shake their hands. And just, you know, it, it, we live in that era where I, I've said it before, it's no like trust, right? So if you start getting familiar with going to coffee shops or going to little like, you know, seminars or meetup you know, groups, your face starts getting familiar, right? People start to know you, right? Eventually they start to like you, your personality. Then they eventually start to trust you. Maybe they might be a potential customer. Maybe they might know some customers for you. I mean, you just never know. So that's why, um, to me, just getting out there, being social and going to conferences, seminars, coffee shops is, is a big game changer um, on building your network and just, you know, um, your net worth. And you have to you have to be out, you have to put yourself out there. Though. You have to sit there. You can't go there and be an introvert and be in your own little bubble. I mean, I get that. You want to get go there and get shit done, get work done. But again, you have to sit there and have that open, that, that mindset of, look, I want to meet someone today. I, if I can just meet one person when I'm there, that's all I need. And it builds up. Yeah. Right? I don't even want to get in that whole argument about no. like, some, the whole excuse of people who are nerd introverts and extroverts. No, no, no. no I'm I'm not, I get tired to. of hearing that shit. I really do. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And then another little story I want to tell you guys about too, just like what a good example of this is, um, is we went to a conference one time in uh, Arizona. It was probably two years ago. It was a Chris Record. Internet um, marketing. Yeah, internet marketing. It was Chris Record that put this on. Great, great conference. And there's a ton of people. Like, I'm talking like thousands. And we got added to a Facebook group once we bought a ticket, which was cool. So I was like, huh, light bulb. I was like, this is a great way to just, you know, establish like that community feeling and just kind of like lead, you know, be a leader within, within this group of people at this conference. So uh, Chris and I literally just put out like a very friendly invite within the context of that Facebook group of all the people going to the conference. All we said was like, hey guys, very nice to meet you guys. We'll see you guys at the conference. If you guys see two twins with humongous eyebrows walking around, please say hello. So right there, <laughs> broke the ice, just being friendly, being ourselves. And then we said, hey, 
by the way, Saturday night, we're gonna go out to this restaurant. We did some research. We're gonna go to this restaurant, get some dinner, get some drinks. And after that, we might go out you know, to a bar, a lounge, just have some fun, right? So we just put it out there. And then I think there was a good response from it. And then, you know, it turned out- Because you wanted to back it up or what? You wanted to get low and back it up? Yeah, just something about that. I was back in my dancing days. So we get low, 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 low. But no, like I said, we just put that out there, a very friendly invite. And um, I want to say like 10 to 15 people showed up. So it was cool, you know? And then we actually built those relationships with those people from just all different parts of, you know, around the world. Mm -hmm. Got to see them, you know, have a couple of drinks, yeah. act goofy just you know live life so it was awesome and that's what it's all about that's the power of networking right there just something so small for you to just like put out a Facebook invite to go into a restaurant or going to grab a drink I mean it goes a long way so, no, yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, that's when Eric did a spin move and he actually slipped I did so yeah. I got two left feet yeah I got a couple of drinks and then we got a little bit courageous <laughs> with the dance moves. Um, on a serious note I want to add a couple of things though to that point number three about going to conferences seminars meetups coffee shops yeah. and all that stuff yeah. um, I think that's great I think another thing a couple three things that you guys can do because um, you want to take action within this somehow is the number one thing is take your phone with you you guys can take a picture with somebody that you meet you guys could even go even further and do a one minute video with this person because I think video is a little bit more powerful you know because you could put that video because you know everybody has that perception where it's like oh you go to a conference you just took a picture with somebody right and it's like anybody can almost do that and, and I get their point with that so go the extra mile to just do a one minute video with somebody right so if there's a speaker there be like hey can I just take one minute of your time and just kind of like you know ask you one question you know and just ask them one question one takeaway or something like from their speech or something like that for one minute because nobody's gonna really deny a one minute video you know it's only one minute of their time yeah. right you're not asking for five or ten minutes yeah so do a one minute video with them and you know just uh, have that clip and then you know later on you guys can put that on a landing page later you guys can put that on you know social media run some ads to it whatever it is that you guys have but you guys have that social proof with them instead of just yeah. a picture the second thing is um, take down their name and like their best way to contact them you know mm -hmm. and put it on a spreadsheet after that that's the third point is create a spreadsheet because you're not gonna remember all these people. You're not gonna remember all yeah, like the, the best way to contact them. You're not gonna remember why you wanna connect with them. So or when, you, or when you know what I mean? So, because you don't wanna bug them too much. So put it all on the spreadsheet, get organized mm -hmm. with it. And that way you guys have the data to when you guys can reach out to them when the last time was, what the conversation was, what you could do for them, you know, stuff like that, you know? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to forget. Okay, cool. So let's move on to uh, the fourth way forward. to make your network your net worth, okay? So send videos like on holidays or birthdays, you know, something that's going to remember uh, that, that, that these people that you want to build a connection with uh, and a relationship with, that it's really going to go the extra mile and make them, you know, feel special and you're going to remember mm -hmm. uh, that they're going to feel remembered, right? So uh, I, I like doing birthdays, you know, whenever it's uh, somebody's birthday that I want to like sit there and build a relationship, I'll literally, if I have their phone number, I'll send them a video message, not a text message, I'll send them a video message saying, hey, happy birthday, hope you have a great birthday. Um, another way is just um, sending people cards, right? Yeah, so absolutely. cards are super cheap. You guys can go down to like Target or even on Amazon or Vistaprint and get a bunch of like, you know, cards made for like 10, 15 bucks that are personalized, branded, you know, with your logo, whatever it is. And you have, you have cards to sit there and mail out. And literally it's a, a two to $5 investment, you know, to send somebody a card these days saying, hey, happy birthday. Hey, happy anniversary. Hey, congratulations on your book launch or congratulations on X, Y, Z. Yeah, I mean, do, you, do you remember like when we used to do a lot of the uh, interviews via Skype? Yeah. Just with our podcast guests. Right. Um, what we used to do was send them out like mouse pads, customized yep. mouse pads via Vistaprint for like $10 with their logo, their, their branding or something like some sort of quote they said. And it's just a nice little personalized touch. And they, every person that we sent them to, they're blown away and just like, wow, thank you. And then they share it on social media. Share it on social media. Wink guys, so that's key right there. Yeah. And then now what we do with our guests um, in person is we actually buy them a small gift and we give it to, we give it to them once they come to our office here in, in Culver City. And again, it's not like it has to be like a 50 to $100 gift. It, there's there's so many like things that like, you know, Vistaprint, things remembered where it's like 20, 30 bucks here and there. But but tell you those little gifts that the, the whole psychology of giftology goes a long ways with your network. Yep, exactly. And they're they're always gonna remember that. They yeah, really are. Absolutely. And just go the extra mile doing a little bit of research on like what they're into and stuff yeah. like that. You know, mm -hmm. just get them a little gift. So yeah, that, that's kind of the fourth way to really, you know, make your network your network is just really send videos. Um, on holidays or birthdays, you know, gift cards, little small gifts, stuff like that, so that they remember you. Yeah, or we even say audio if you want to just go the audio yeah. route. Yeah. 
All right, so number five, the last way to make your network your net worth is plain and simple, guys. Be resilient and be fucking persistent, right? Yep. Now, let me explain to you why you need to be resilient and persistent along this journey of building your network because, like we said, some people are going to be assholes, some people are going to be douchebags, some people are going to put themselves on a pedestal, some people are going to have massive Instagram numbers and that makes them gods and goddesses in today's world, I suppose. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic because you guys are going to oh, But um, yeah, that's hilarious. We should do an episode on that. Yeah. I'm not going to get into that right now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, in all honesty, uh, you have to be resilient, you have to be persistent because a lot, like I said, all those points that I just mentioned before, they really do exist. And Chris and I are proven tests of this because we have a podcast. We've been doing this for two years now. So we've reached out to so many people, right? We've asked these big name people, influencers. Sometimes you don't get a reply. Sometimes they don't, they just say no. Today's not a good, I mean, it's not a good time right now. So sometimes you got to pay to play. Yeah, sometimes you have to now. say, hey, I'll put ad money behind it. Um, I'll pay for your time. So buy your books. Yeah, it's just, it's stuff. part of, it's part of it, you know? So you have to be ready for that. And you have to have thick skin. Most importantly, you can't take it personal, right? So what is that? And then that book, The Four Agreements. Four agreements don't take it personal. personal. But um, anyways, yeah, you just, you can't take it personal. Um, and I do respect, you know, people's time. I know people are busy. Um, and then most importantly, I think a lot of people forget, right? Because there's so much, you know, stuff thrown our way. There's so much, you know, um, shiny objects. There's attention spans are short. I mean, you can miss an email, you can miss a DM. It's very easy to do, right? But that's why I'm saying be persistent, be resilient, literally follow up to these guys and people, you know, maybe seven to 10 times, right? Until they, until you get a response. If you get a response and they say, you guys stop stalking me or leave me alone, then okay, you take them off your spreadsheet and you don't ever uh, reach back out to them, right? That's fine. But again, um, be resilient, be persistent along the way when building your network because that's something Chris and I have really acquired very well. And we use our podcast platform as a great way to, to network with people, right? Build to build our, our, build our relationship, build our network. I mean, we've had 130 guests on pretty much. So that's 130 powerful people that we have in our Rolodex. And, you know, we can always go to them and, and have an ask, but we don't have an ask right now, you know? So just keep in mind, just always be persistent, be resilient. Yeah. And for those of you guys that, you know, don't have a podcast, you guys can use like YouTube as a platform to interview people, um, something like that. You guys can use a blog to do guest um, you so, know, interviews, guests, like contributions, like to build like relationships. Yeah. So let me ask you, so I think that's a good question because I'm trying to put myself in a listener's perspective right now. What would you, if, if a listener, if someone asked you like, okay, Chris, I don't have like a big social media following. I don't have like a lot of money. Um, how do I sit there and build my network? You know, with, with nothing really. Yeah. Well, um, number one, I'm going to, I'm going to say that that's excuses, right? Because it's almost like that person asking you that is looking for validation from you that, Oh, it's okay. You don't have like X amount of members. You don't have X amount of money. You don't have this platform, so you're okay. You can't sit there and network then. Okay. So I don't like that, right? So I, I, what I would do though is I would probably sit there and just start reaching out to people, like on DMs. Um, you know, join Facebook groups. I would probably look, join local meetups. I would definitely invest in that, um, attending some of the conferences and do some of the stuff that we're kind of talking about. You know, build a spreadsheet, take videos, be a giver, not a taker, yeah. stuff like that. So it, it's never about like that. You have to have like this amount of money or this amount of like social media or this or this this or that platform to be able to sit there and network and build relationships not about that that's that, that's never going to change it's like what i talked about earlier if you want to sit there and accelerate that process then yeah you can sit there and pay to play right pay to get people's attention and time right but i don't like that in a way sometimes because then i think the other person on the other side doesn't respect you as much because you just pay for their time and it's like, okay, anybody that has like a lot of money can sit there and do something like that, right? And I like building the relationship the old old school way. Yeah, and I can see if you were investing like in like a coaching game, yeah, a mastermind, yeah. something yeah. like that, then that's it's completely different. Yeah, so there's no excuse, guys, if you guys don't have this platform or this amount of numbers or this X amount of money, you know what I mean? Just get out there and just start being a giver, not a taker. Um, start networking with people, you know, build a spreadsheet like we told you guys and just learn off along the way, fine tune things. Because trust me, uh, at the end of the day, your network is your net worth, yeah. you know? And let me ask you something before we wrap up on this, because mm -hmm. uh, I think this is an important question for the listeners to ponder as well too. You know, if somebody came to you today and said, do you think it's more about 
uh, who you know as opposed to what you know? Or is it more important uh, what you know as opposed to who you know? I think I said that right. Yeah, but you said that right. I, that, I, I, I've heard that too. Uh, Travis, Travis says that a lot in his podcast yeah. show. So it's a good question. But um, yeah, I, I think it's more about who you know okay. than, than what you know. Just because, again, it goes back to that influence, having that Rolodex, having that power of you know people with like massive followings, other massive influence to you know help you out when that time comes, right? But again, you have to sit there and plant those seeds. You have to make those deposits. You have to sit there and be a giver, not a taker. You have to sit there and establish that relationship, get them to know you, like you, trust you. It takes time. There might, it might not be in one year, two years, three years. It might be. It might take five years. But again, you should be playing the long game within building your network, right? Because ultimately, that is going to lead to more network going forward. So, yeah. absolutely, hundred percent. I would say it's all about who you know, not what you know, because there's so much damn information out there and it's great to have information, but half the time, all these people have all this info in their head. It's like, there's no action or execution, so what's it matter? Yeah, just because they have info doesn't mean it's knowledge. Yeah, but that's exactly. a whole other um, subject. But yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. Yeah. So let me just uh, recap these five ways to recap make your network your net worth, okay? So the first one is have a giver mentality, okay? The second one is bring books, business cards, you know, wherever you can pass those out to wherever you go, uh, gyms, coffee shops, uh, go to conferences, seminars, meetup groups, coffee shops, okay? Take pictures, like we said, uh, one minute clips, get their name, put them on a spreadsheet. The fourth thing is send videos or holiday um, or, or birthday cards to people on important dates just to make them feel special and, and make sure that they you know, are remembered. And then the fifth one is have thick skin, be resilient and be persistent, you know? So that's pretty much five ways to make your network your network. Whew. And most, your network, your net worth. That's a little tricky. And most, <laughs> most importantly, guys, you guys have five great tips here on building your network. Um, so that's all we ask is go out there, you know, test them out, execute. Don't just sit there and just take all this information and let it just sit there. And if you guys have some good little like actionable steps like yeah. these that we haven't mentioned, yeah. hey, don't hold back, we're, guys. We're always open for an email, a comment, yeah. a DM. Um, let us know your thoughts on that. We're always trying to learn too. I'm always a student too. All yeah. right. All right, guys. So until next time on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast and Chris and I's amazing solo rounds, where I, I pretty much kept a straight face the whole time today. Um, so I thought this was kind of more. I think of a, it's just the beginning. Where it's yeah, it was. It was more of a serious discussion, so I was able to just like you know compose myself. <laughs> but um, yes, until next time, uh, if you have anybody that you know would benefit from this episode, uh, please share that with them. This is um, you know something we appreciate. We're all about you know getting our podcast out there and other people learning. So. Um, also to last thing, um, you know, have a great Thanksgiving and stuff your face. Do not feel guilty and spend that amazing time with your loved ones and create those memorable experiences. And may all the macros be with you guys. Exactly. May all the calories be with you. Okay guys, until next time, go out there and live a dynamic lifestyle. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this podcast video. If you guys are interested in watching and listening to more of our podcasts, Make sure to click the link in the description box below. We have a ton of awesome podcasts. I mean, we're up to like 130 right now. We're giving one out every single week, and we're actually bringing on some of the big guests um, out there, and everything is really centered around lifestyle habits, systems, overcoming adversity, how someone got from point A to point B, and some of the rituals um, and lessons learned throughout that entire journey. So you guys will gain a lot of value from these podcasts, whether it's, whether it's through audio or here on, on YouTube, okay? So make sure to check out the link in the description box, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.